So I've been coming to these meetups for a while, and you often see these amazing, crazy demos, things that I could never have conceived of. And um, I'm going to do something a little bit different, because we use Meteor in the real world. The subtitle was Enterprise Meteor, because we're running a business on it. And it might not be the most glamorous business. It, in that it doesn't involve um, music and dance and all the cool stuff that you normally see here. But it's different perspective, and hopefully if anyone's thinking of using Meteor for something other than a demo, it provides a bit of reflection on what works well and what doesn't, and a bit of background. So, I'm CTO, co-founder of Chaser, and I'll say a little bit more about the business in a minute, but my background is as a computer scientist, um, studied computer science and computational linguistics, then worked in financial trading. I've done a bit of work generally around data storage, analysis, um, data warehousing, and most recently been working in the field of bioinformatics and computational biology, so based in research. And I mean, I started my career as a Java developer, doing actual kind of client-side Java applets and stuff, um, Java applications, and then moved into web development through Play, which is a, a, a good Scala and uh, Java web development framework. Graduated more and more front end, and now are kind of full time Meteor and JavaScript. Um, been lurking at these meetups for a while, been using Meteor for uh, almost two and a half years now, since the really early days. So I've learned quite a lot about it. Still a lot to learn, but yeah, it's worked out well so far. So we've started a small business um, to address one particular problem that affects other small, medium businesses which is around late payment. And there's been a lot of stuff in the news recently about people exploiting their suppliers, big businesses, um, offering you know, really long credit terms uh, to small businesses. And that's often compounded by the fact that they pay them late. So it could be up to three months, even longer, before you actually get paid the goods or services you provided to somebody. And this is very expensive. Uh, it's a big problem in the UK and Europe-wide. You can see the figures here. But um, this is the problem we're trying to address. And we have some kind of a solution for this. So we started Chaser. Um, really, I'd say probably about a year ago, but the product's been in prototype and development for a bit longer than that. And last year we launched, and there's currently four of us, and um, it's B2B software. So Chaser, which in capital letters, is the product that, we, that we've developed so far. And it's uh, online, it's a web app, you, you pay monthly for it. And it links to your cloud accounting system, so it pulls information about all your sales, all your customers, and provides these kind of strategies for chasing up your customers to pay you on time. It does that using, at the moment, a system of automated emails. You can customize the content and the timing of. Um, it's been very well received so far. So, you, so we plug into this system called Zero, which is the fastest growing accounting system. And there's an add-on store, a bit like there is the App Store for um, iOS, that kind of thing. And we're the top-rated one on there in our category. And we've proven that it works, right? So it doesn't cost very much per month. But if you turn over a million pounds a year, we can show that we can get your invoices paid faster, which is equivalent to a significant cash boost um, for your company. So just to give you, I'm not going to do a live demo, unlike the normal routine because you know, I'm not that brave. But basically, the <laughs> essence, not that it's unreliable, just that I'm going to whiz through this. So basically, you set up a schedule. This is the essence of the product. There's a lot to it, but this is the most important bits, I guess. You have a customizable schedule. You can do this based on the customers that you have. And it's, you can do recurring, and you can attach statements, and all this kind of thing. It's all good. It's all highly configurable. And then you obviously customize the content of the messages, who they go to, who they come from, all of that. And then the good thing is that it then tracks the conversation that goes on about payment. It logs it all. And you can go back and review what's happened, why it might be late. You can learn about your customers and how, badly, how bad they are at paying you on time. And we accumulate lots of information about, about, about the, um, the history of, of payment for these customers. So this is obviously the web app. It's, it's quite minimal in kind of theme, but in its kind of enterprise software. It's kind of modeled on Zero itself, which um, has the same kind of theme. So I'll just move on to say a little bit more about how we built this and how it runs. So we run on Rackspace, and 
We have kind of eight production servers, which are split between application servers, a front end kind of web server, load balancer proxy, a three member Mongo replica set. Then we have two kind of interlisted servers that aggregate the logs and do lots of metrics. So that runs every night, provides us lots of information about um, how the system's running. It also generates stats that we can provide to the users of Chaser. It's all monitored using New Relic and uh, Rackspace's native uh, system monitoring stuff. So we, we use MongoDB 2.4, which is the one officially supported by the current version of Meteor. Um, we're, database is growing quite fast, but as of last week, we have about 300,000 documents split across several collections. Uh, it's not enormous on disk when it's dumped, um, which is good. But um, we have lots of indexes to make querying these documents fast. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. So just some reflections on what's worked and what hasn't with Meteor so far. I mean, we're really impressed on the whole, right? I mean, it is properly full stack. When you think about, and we have, as contingency for outgrowing Meteor or, you know, we've looked at the alternatives and what we would need to build equivalent functionality, and it's a whole lot of work. To, to join those pieces together to make sure they remain compatible with each other is tricky because you at least need something like socket IO, you'll still need the back end database, you'll still need the front end templating stuff. And that's something that, you know, it would have taken us a whole lot longer to get where we are. We're absolutely certain of that if we'd chosen an alternative solution. Um, really is rapid development, it's easy to get started and uh, really easy to keep going. I mean, if you look at it now, the documents, like the online documentation, is a lot bigger than it used to be. It used to fit easily on one page, now there's the advanced version and the basic version. But still, there's tons of tutorials out there, and it's easy to start writing an app that's backed by a database, which in essence is what a lot of web apps are. And surprisingly, I mean, that's changed a lot. It's been every release we've found to be very reliable, and we're, we're currently running the latest, the latest release, and we haven't had any problems really related to um, following uh, the bleeding edge. And although we're not writing a game or anything, we really like the real-time element. Everything's reflected immediately because it means that we can sync in real time with zero and pull all this information in dynamically. On the previous screenshot, if an email comes in, it immediately populates on the screen. So you know that what you're seeing is completely up to date. And of course, it's open source. It's the code's well structured. There's some growing documentation about all the components. So in that respect, I mean, we run a slightly uh, modified version. Um, I wouldn't call it a fork, but we've customized a couple of bits and, and that, that was easy. They're not changes that anyone else would particularly want to use but it, it benefits us because we can, we can customise it. So a, a slightly shorter list of things we've had issues with. Um, so MiniMongo is this thing where client-side and server-side, you have the same kind of query language to MongoDB, the database. And there are some inconsistencies in the query language there, which makes it quite hard to reuse the code. So we run code nightly to do um, the analytics. And some of that should be shared with the server-side code, but because we run it natively against Mongo, it's a little bit different. That gets a bit frustrating. Uh, the new Meteor shell stuff makes that easier, but you can't use that remotely. I think one thing we're a bit scared about is how dependent we are on Meteor. It's kind of pervaded the whole of our code base, uh, right from generating new UIDs. Sometimes it's a case of being lazy because in Meteor you kind of come to use it, but then it also scares me a little bit if we ever changed our mind for any reason, it would be quite hard to, to migrate to something else unless you're really disciplined. We've had some issues with package quality. And, I mean, there's tons of good packages out there, but they're frequently superseded by better ones and unmaintained and often their dependencies are out of date. So we've had it, find it quite hard to keep up with that. And kind of related to that is that where Meteor fits, fits into the kind of JavaScript ecosystem in terms of compatibility with um, NPM, like the predominant package manager there, and new versions of JavaScript, and the whole thing about async functions and fibers, which I'm not going to really go into, but often you have to spend time kind of writing shims around NPM modules to make them work um, with the concurrency model that Meteor uses itself. So some things which you can take either way. The tight integration, like I said earlier, is great because you know all the pieces have been tested together, but sometimes it's a little bit difficult to figure out if you wanted to swap out bits and pieces, which now is easier than it, than it was before, because everything is much better modularized, but it's not clear how you would do that if you don't like the templating language or you don't like Mongo. Data synchronization is great in terms of the real-time features, but 
it does end up that by default you end up syncing everything to the client. And you've, if you want to be a bit more selective about that, because now we're dealing with large data sets and big customers, you have to do some work to make sure that the user experience doesn't suffer through sending too much data. But of course, you want them to better dynamically search and find all the data that they have on the system. And the pace of development should be a P in there is like really impressive. I mean, it's features improved so fast, but of course, with that, there's keeping up. And we had, we adopted it way before version 1.0. Um, so we've kind of felt a lot of the pain there, particularly around the Blaze migration, which is when they changed the templating system. But we've managed to keep up, and it's great that we are up to date now, and because we're really seeing the benefits of, of the latest features. So some reflections on things that we think <coughs> could be improved and of course we have a part to play in that because we we should be part of the community there's more we I think there's more we can do in that respect um, but we struggle with global error handling and reporting sometimes getting information about what's gone wrong client and server side um, some it seems like some packages are so important that they should be officially endorsed or sponsored and this is not to like reduce the contribution of the authors of those packages I think Velocity is officially the, the new testing package, but there's a huge fragmentation previously. I mean, we rely on TinyTest, on Mocha, we have some Casper phantom tests as well, and it's a bit of a mess. And there's no sign of that settling down quite yet. I mean, the router that we use, the Iron router, like most people, has changed a lot, and the versioning on that's a bit crazy. And some of the UI stuff for accounts, there is a native accounts UI, but it's quite restrictive. And these are things that everyone should need to build a production Meteor app but the support for these packages is a bit um, flaky. I mean, we'd love to use the latest MongoDB, and hopefully they'll, they'll sync with MongoDB 3 that's coming up. But like 2.6 would be, I think, fast and have some nice features that we could use, but we're still on 2.4 because the official support, and when we did deploy 2.6, we had some issues with upserts and stuff, and they are documented in the, um, on the GitHub issues, and I'm sure they'll be fixed, but I don't think it's quite... I don't think it's entirely sensible to run a production on 2.6, that's all I'd say. And related to that, I mean, everyone says this, but it would be great to be able to run from key value for, like, there's some Redis support now, but it would be great to run on Postgres or Rethink or an alternative, but I can see why it doesn't do that, because MongoDB is a good fit on the client and server side. So some things that we struggle with and we're not sure about what we should do, and this will probably affect most people who try and scale up and out the way we are, the use of collections and methods. I think over time, sort of best practice for this will emerge from the community and, and these things kind of change. Like we use collections for everything and we sync to the client, but you've got to be really careful about security in that case and restricting what people send back. And, but it does provide a good experience. And methods, you can do other stuff with Stubbs client side to make it work. Just organising your projects, there's no consensus about the best way to do that. And scaling up, as, you, as we are now, we've got a lot of packages, we've got a lot of folders, and it's, that's tricky. Like I said earlier, trying to write code and trying to be defensive about making sure you don't rely too much on Meteor, that's not easy. And it's not obvious how to structure your app to kind of separate <coughs> your plain JavaScript code from Meteor-specific stuff. Testing is a big challenge. I mean, we haven't got enough of we haven't got enough tests, but also we don't quite know how to do it effectively. Um, we're hoping that things like Velocity will make that clearer. And just scaling up in terms of the, the way you organise your code, in terms of using stuff like Node Cluster to actually have more than one server. We have stuff that runs every hour that needs to be on one server, but we also have the web app, the front-end servers, which we can duplicate, but we're not doing very effectively. So these are things that would be great to discuss uh, later on. Um, and just some things that I think might not be obvious when you start out, but can really make the difference in making your app usable compared to just a toy. And Mongo is great. You can use it as a cache, right? And you can use this TTL stuff to expire documents effectively. And that we've found that works really well. We've got away from a lot of performance problems by, by sort of being a bit creative with the way we use MongoDB itself. But when you do that, you've got to put indexes on everything. So you, all you've got to do there, I mean, nothing's created by default. And if you don't have indexes, it will be like terrible. So you just got to watch the MongoDB log like a hawk, and it will tell you anything that's over 100 milliseconds, whatever the default is. And when you see one of those queries, you have to add an index yourself. It's not fun, but it can make a difference between making the app usable and useless. Um, so MongoDB is great in that it doesn't enforce a schema, but 
I think at the application level, you generally should or at least validate the documents that you're storing. Otherwise, you get into a whole lot of trouble. Um, and you find, normally find out too late that something's gone wrong. Uh, observers, so we had a big problem with, like, if you observe big collections, you really quickly run out of memory. Um, and, you know, that brought our app down a couple of times. So you've got to be really careful about that and do sort and limit rather than just observing big collections. And you've got to be clever about how you use packages and which packages you use, I'd say. And we've learned a lot about that, about the stability, about which packages to trust. And there are package authors that, like Percolate and Tom Coleman and everyone else who writes good stuff and everything else, you've got to just, you just got to try out. So these are some of the ones that we use and we trust. And a lot of other people will be using these by default as well. So the first four on that list are just standard packages. They're well known. They're, they're ones that, you know, I think we rely on and you can probably rely on too. The next are services that we've packaged ourselves internally, but generally are thin wrappers around NPM packages. Um, those kind of reflect the things that we do. So we, we charge people monthly, so Stripe's on there. We send lots of email, MimeLib and NodeMailer, and we integrate with Zero. And finally, there's a couple of packages that we've, that we've kind of written ourselves. They've been a bit more work and that we've published. Um, and we'd like to do more of that. It's just a matter of finding the time to package them up and to support them, really. So from a business perspective, um, we've got loads more work than we can do, to be honest. And we're acquiring loads of information about the businesses who use Chaser and about their sales and about their customers. We want them to do business more effectively and to help them manage their cash flow. So we're acquiring loads of data that we're not taking advantage of right now. And it's going to be quite interesting how we integrate that with our web application and how we do stuff like NLP on the messages that go back and forth about um, the unpaid invoices that we have. I mean, what we want to do is develop effective strategies automatically, intelligent chasing. So we, as we learn about your businesses and we learn about how late they pay you, we learn about how well they respond to the messages that we send, then we can intelligently modify strategies on the fly. That means we can optimise the standard schedules that we give you when you sign up, and over time we'll learn more and more about you and improve them. And at the moment, we just do email, but we're looking at things like SMS, phone going forward, and whatever other means we find to be effective. Other people even do post as a, as a last resort. I mean, we don't, the final resort is kind of legal demands, and we, we don't do that because 80% of the problem can be solved just by effectively telling people what's due and how to pay it and by when. And ultimately, the aim is to sort of leverage all this data that we have about businesses to help them do business more effectively to target um, who to sell to and when and how much so that they, um, they can increase their, their turnover. So I just wanted to thank, I mean, I've been coming to this meetup for a while. There's some great resources online. There's the Meteor Group Development Group. There's Meteor London, of course. Um, great stuff online that most people know about, but if you're a newcomer, definitely worth checking out. Discover Meteor, the book, which has a blog as well. Meteopedia, which is a little bit older, I think, but just aggregates loads of frequently asked questions, resources about Meteor. Uh, Meteor Hacks, and there's some really crazy ideas in there. I think a lot of them should probably be in Core Meteor, but, you know. And the package authors themselves, I mentioned a few of them, but, you know, we wouldn't be able to do what we do just with Core Meteor, so just wanted to thank everyone, you know, on the previous list of packages who spent time writing those and supporting them. It's a lot of work. So... I think that's it, just to finally say, I mean, we're growing quite fast, so we're hiring. If you're into Meteor and you want to do it full-time with some of these other things that we use, any of those that you're interested in, and we're, we're changing all the time, especially as we get into data analysis, loads of opportunities for anyone interested in um, data science, visualisation, um, building infrastructure for handling big data sets. And that's it. Thanks for listening. <laughs>